All right, we're all set up and we're live here. So this is Steve Eckert from Peak Physique Training Center in Nanuet, New York. A lot of you already know me. Some of you that don't, you're going to find out about me today, probably a little more than you thought you knew, probably a little more than you want to know. But the reason why we're doing this is a couple people have been asking recently, how did we originally start Peak Physique? How do we create such a different type of gym, different type of atmosphere? So I kind of wanted to answer that. We started turning it into this whole question answer thing. So at the end, we have some uh, questions that people emailed in that we'll answer. Or if you have any questions, you could just post them right down there below in the comments and we can answer them right now live. It could be your health, your fitness, nutrition, whatever kind of questions you might have. So we're going to go a little bit into the history of Peak Physique, a little bit of how I got into this, and a little bit about my personal history to let you know a little more about me that you probably didn't know. And I probably shouldn't be mentioning, but I think there's a statute of limitations on a lot of things, so I should be in the clear. So when I first started personal training, I really just wanted to help a lot of people who felt they really couldn't help themselves. People who felt like they didn't fit into regular gyms or with regular people. People who were being held back or uh, held back by their environment, by people around them. The fucking crabs that try to drag them down, those people. Sorry for cursing. That's the last time I'm going to curse this whole time, I promise. Maybe. Anyway, people are trying to drag you down all the time. That's the kind of place you want to create an environment for people like that, who, who can fit in that really didn't fit anywhere else. People who thought they were weird or different, they were uncomfortable in gyms, or they were uncoordinated, overweight, weak, shy, maybe they were bullied as a kid, bullied their entire lives. Some people were even bullied as adults. We wanted to help people that were introverted type people, people dealing with different types of uh, adversity and thought they had nowhere else really to go, nowhere else to, that they can get help or people would accept them. But the entire state of the training field was, when I was in there, was stale, lifeless, it was commercialized, it was just a bunch of bullshit. It wasn't helping anyone. So I might not have ever been that overweight kid, but I can definitely uh, relate to a lot of these different types of adversity that most of these people have dealt with. Basically, I never fit in anywhere in my entire life. As a young kid, three years old, on the playgrounds, I would wear a Zorro mask on my face, hoping that I would hide myself from all the other kids, except, that I wanted, except for the girls, of course. I don't know if it was a fear of bullies or a fear of being made fun of or whatever. I started wearing glasses when I was four years old and thought that maybe that was another thing that kids would think I was weird or make fun of. So I went to the first, from the first grade to the 11th grade to not seeing a fucking single thing on the chalkboard. Throughout my entire career in school, I could not see one thing. I just had to wing it, figure it out as I went along. Basically, I didn't fit in in elementary school either. After the playgrounds, three years old didn't fit in, went to elementary school, didn't fit in there either. I'm the youngest of six kids from a poor family with a father that liked to in, indulge in adult beverages now and then, or maybe a horse race or 10 every now and then, or every night maybe. Uh, I basically never owned any cool toys or designer clothes or any of that bullshit. Never even had decent clothes. Never even had new clothes. School year, maybe one, maybe one set of clothes I would get new for the whole school year. We didn't, never had cable TV or fancy bicycles or any of the cool new toys. Maybe I would have some imitation stuff or whatever. You know these stupid ass kids nowadays that wear the pants hanging off their ass with their crusty ass underwear sticking out and their, their ass crack sticking out where they probably didn't even fucking wipe their ass with their underwear sticking out of their jeans. Basically I invented that trend 30 years ago when I was forced to wear my brother's 10 year, 10 year old brother's clothes when I couldn't fit into them obviously. I was basically always a hungry skinny kid so I'd go out and start stealing food just for snacks. I got caught stealing for the first time when I was three years old. Three year old got caught stealing food. I was just a fucking hungry and skinny kid. But nowadays, I tell my five-year-old son, or actually, no, not my son, uh, a friend of mine, his son. Uh, I, I tell my son, or my friend's son, I mean, that if anyone's ever bullying him or picking on his little sister, just punch him right in the freaking nose. I don't care. He, said, he might say, you know, I'll get in trouble or whatever, but I'd much rather have a kid that, get, that gets in trouble for punching a kid in the nose and have to deal with the principal's bullshit than having a kid that just is bullied for years, keeping it suppressed inside, especially with like the powerful ruthlessness that these kids have on social media these days. I'd much rather punch a punch in the nose, a little bit of blood, and some principal with their bullshit, whatever, and deal with it there than have a kid that just bottles it up inside and one day it ends up jumping off the Tappan Zee Bridge because he couldn't handle it anymore. Punch in the nose will solve everything, I'll tell you that. Basically, bullying, bullying almost became a problem for me when I was a kid, but that was until they realized that I basically would just bite their fucking nose off, so that really didn't become much of a problem. One time in elementary school, I don't even remember, second grade, third grade, first grade, one of those early years, this kid next to me fell asleep in class. 
The teacher says, Why'd you, how, why are you falling asleep? Did you, did you not get enough sleep last night? He says, well, Eckert's dad's crappy car has no muffler, so it wakes up the whole neighborhood. So I took my desk, I turned around, and I beat him with my desk. Basically, that set the tone for any kids thinking about ever doing any kind of physically, physically bullying me. But it really doesn't end there. Then it goes on to high school. Basically, I didn't fit in high school either. I never played any high school sports. I had zero friends in high school. I never went to a single party, never went to a single high school function. Fuck the prom, didn't even consider it. I didn't take my SATs. I never even attended a single fucking football game. I wasn't into the drugs and uh, all that drinking and everything that 99% of the kids that age are into. I actually never even tried drugs even one time. Never even smoked weed once in my life. I suppose that's part of what made me not one of the, the cool fucking kids around. Actually, I remember in recess in the, in the fifth fucking grade, kids would sneak off into the woods to go chew, go chew tobacco and smoke cigarettes. And I didn't go do it, so I guess that's where I really started going downhill by not being one of the cool kids because I, I wasn't smoking cigarettes and chewing tobacco in, in the fifth fucking grade. Anyway, also, I was just thinking about it. On a, on a couple of years ago, I was in the uh, Walmart. I was going in there to buy some ammo for my rifle. And this nice older gentleman comes pushing, you know, pushing the shopping carts. He works there at Walmart. He's like, hey, Edgar, what's up, man? Remember me from high school? Can I bum a smoke off you? I'm like, sorry, man, I don't smoke. Um, but he looked like he was down on his luck. I really didn't recognize the guy. And I tell him, you know what? He's down on his luck. I offer him to come in for a free month of training into peak physique. To this day, I still have no clue who, the, who this guy was. Uh, and he never showed up, obviously. But the offer's still available. If you're out there watching, the offer is there. Come on in, a free month. I'll help you out. I'll help you change your life. Uh, you know, actually, I want to offer a free week to anyone that I ever, anyone I ever went to school with. I want to offer you a free week. Come on into the gym for a free week. Anyone that ever went to any school with. I probably won't remember you because you probably won't remember me because basically I was just such a loser, right? Uh, I was just unnoticed, under the radar. I almost, it, almost got, it got so bad I almost started feeling like I wanted to be bullied, basically. Because rather than live an entire 12 years of school in obscurity, almost invisible, got to the point where at least I would be noticed if I was bullied, right? And then something happened like that, but whatever. Although, if that happened, I would have just ripped the trachea out of their neck if that ever did happen, but that's besides the point. Anyway, senior year, when I was a senior year in high school, I once left the stash of cash. Uh, it doesn't matter how, where the stash of cash came from. I left the stash of cash in my locker in the school. So I went back to, to the school after school was over, like an hour after school was over. Still, still daylight. The assistant principal sees me driving into the school. He calls the police, not even knowing that I was a student in the school. I almost got a... I almost fucking got arrested for being a complete nobody. That's how much of a nobody that I really was. That, that after years of going to that school, I'm a senior, end of the year, I almost got arrested because it, the, they didn't even know that I was a student there. Part of the fact might have been because I missed 50% of my days in high school year. I had zero friends. I had no reason to be there. I fucking hated everybody there. So, But one thing is, even though I missed all those days, I technically should have failed, never should have uh, graduated, but... All my teachers were impressed that I was still able to pass the test. Even with, even with C's and D's, I was able to pass the test when I was never even in the class. Somehow I'd always pull it off, and I wasn't cheating on it. It just wasn't that difficult. Only one that gave me a problem was the art teacher. Imagine this. I'm a senior in a fucking freshman art class. So talk about torture. And the teacher was going to fail me because I missed more than half the classes, and I didn't complete one single assignment all year. So I wasn't going to graduate because of a... Freshman fucking art class, right? Credit, or whatever the hell it is. So I met the teacher after class one day, and I asked her how her nice new uh, uh, blue Toyota car was doing. I asked her how does it drive, and then I told her I had heard that there were some problems with those type of cars with their brakes, and they didn't really brake, and a lot of people were crashing with those cars. So I told her to be real careful out there. And then I also had mentioned to her how all my other teachers were passing me, even though I didn't show up to school, and, you know, it would be a very, very bad thing if I didn't graduate because of a fucking uh, freshman art credit, Right? So uh, to my surprise, the next day, they call my name at graduation. So there you go, one big victory right there. Speaking of high school, I think there was just a 20-year reunion recently. I don't know, this year, last year, I don't even know. Obviously, I didn't fucking go, right? Does it sound like anything occurred during those four years that I had any desire to be reunited with? Um, if I went, if I went, probably would have been a few fist fights. There are probably still a few people out there that I wouldn't mind letting them beat up my fist at their fucking face. So, uh, so about that free week, I was offering the kids I went to school with, take me up on that offer, take me up on that offer, you guys can come on in, hook you guys up, just make sure you sign the waiver before you get here, right, in case anything happens to happen to you, right? Anyway, I wasn't into doing any of the drugs, so the only option was to go on the other side of things, and that's where I evolved into an entrepreneur. We won't go into the details on that, but whatever. 
So I upgraded all my stealing of snacks as a, as a three-year-old kid to bigger and better things to basically make a living and make some money to survive. But again, we're not going to go into those details. That's not the purpose of this. During this time, there are major street fights. There are tons of crime, police chases, all-out rumbles is causing chaos, fucking rampage in the streets. One time I was just hanging out with a couple of friends on a uh, street in a not-so-upscale part of town, right? And uh, uh, two cars pull up with a group of some known shady local characters from the area. They basically had mistaken one of my friends for someone who just beat the shit out of, one of someone in their crew and put him in the hospital. The guy has his hand in his pocket. He obviously is holding something in his hand. We can only assume what, right? So I pop my trunk and go into my trunk to maybe pull some things out of my trunk that I may or may not have had in the trunk, allegedly. So as I'm pulling out of the trunk, He's pulling his hand out of his pocket. One of his friends says, no, that's not them. Let's go. Let's get out of here. So they take off. It wasn't us they were looking for. They had, made a, they had mistaken us for someone else. It wasn't us this time, at least. I'm sure next time it probably would have been. But anyway, all this type of lifestyle obviously led me to the next place I didn't fit into. I didn't fit in when I went to jail. That same night that this happened with those guys in the car, I was arrested for something completely unrelated, just some stupid shit. And as I'm sitting in the cell, who do I see walking, arrested, Shackled up in handcuffs also, the same guy who had his hand in his pocket. So I'm like, oh shit, they're going to put him in this cell, so I guess we're going to have our fun after all, right? What do they do? They walk him right by our cell, and they put him into a different cell completely by himself, still shackled in his cell. The reason why they didn't put him into our, our cell is after he had left us, that, when we were, had that altercation by the car, and I had popped my trunk, after he left there, he went and shot and killed the person he was looking for, right? So that was two seconds away from basically being me and my friends at the time. So there I was, 19 years old, dodging death on a daily fucking basis. Or if I was lucky, looking forward to a future locked up ahead in jail, most likely, right? That was the moment I realized I was in the wrong game and it was time for a change. So this was the 90s, so back then, I'm sure it's different now because of all this cameras and media and Facebook and bullshit, but back in the 90s, judges had some decision-making influence. So I was given the choice, one to three years, upstate in prison or four years in the Marine Corps. The judge made the Marine Corps the only option in the military because he said and no other branch of service would be able to harness my abilities, as he called it. My brother was also a big influencing factor in uh, joining the Marine Corps, as he's also a Marine. I'm pretty sure he had a similar story in his life up until this point. So anyway, I'm shipping out to the Marine Corps, beautiful Paris Island, South Carolina. I'm 19 years old ready to make a change in my life. The first time I'm ever on an airplane was going to boot camp. I had never been on any family vacation, family trip, not even a day trip in my entire life. I'd never even been outside of fucking New York and New Jersey until I flew to boot camp to South Carolina. So day one at boot camp, I land, you step on the yellow footprints, they're screaming, it's chaos, it's fucking craziness. Everyone there is all nervous and scared, they're already missing home, it's only been one day, fuck that, not me. Finally, I'm in a place where I can fit in. My craziness, my wildness, my intensity wasn't only allowed, it was welcomed, it was encouraged, it was amplified. They were gonna discipline, they were gonna take this little punk ass kid that I was, they were gonna discipline him and redirect the crazy, the fearless kid and make him a relentless, focused, trained, patient, disciplined man, a killer, a leader, and eventually an entrepreneur. One night during the first phase of boot camp, I finished, shining my, I finished shining my shoes and cleaning my rifle, right? So I'm in the back just doing some pull-ups. had a couple extra minutes just to do whatever we needed to do for the night. The senior drill instructor calls me into the room, into his office. He's like, Eckert, what the fuck is your deal? You just walk around here like you're some hot shit. Like, you don't give a fuck. What is your deal? I told him, listen, sir, here I get three square meals a day. I get to work out all day. I get to shoot all kinds of weapons. I throw live grenades. I'm blowing shit up. I said, and you guys pay me every two weeks. I'm kind of used to it. You, you yell at me all day, I'm kind of used to it. I really don't care, I actually kind of enjoy it. At home I never got fed, I never got paid shit, and I still got yelled at all fucking day. So I, he said, I said, sir, here, I'm in fucking heaven. He said, Edgar, get the fuck out of my face. Midway through boot camp, senior drone instructor calls me into his office again. He's like, Eckert, you think you're just Mr. Billy Badass, don't you? You don't give a fuck. What would you do if I just climbed over this table and just punched you in the fucking face? I said, I suppose it would hurt, and I would probably spit out a tooth or two, but then I, we would be rolling around the floor. And I wasted all this time I just spent ironing this uniform. He said, Eckert, get the fuck out of my face. The night before boot camp graduation, Paris Island, South Carolina, he goes into his office one final time. He says, Eckert, you know I can't fucking stand you. 
One look at you, and I want to fucking puke. You're like a little fucking vermin. I just want to take my combat boot, and I want to stomp your fucking head like a grape. But if I was a stuck, stuck alone in, in a foxhole behind enemy lines, you were exactly who I'd want to be by my side. Now, Eckert, get out of my fucking face. The next day at graduation, I was one of the three Marines selected for an immediate meritorious promotion to the next highest rank. One night while I was stationed in uh, California, just got there, now I'm 20 years old in uh, San Diego, Southern California. Small group of us Marines, we had some time off. We went out to go partying at a bar. Yes, we are serious, trained, robotic killers, the Marines. But when it comes for time off, we are the masters at time off. We are the masters of partying and drinking. One of my friends was wasted being just inappropriate and belligerent with the girl in the club. She wasn't necessarily telling him, you know, pushing him away or anything, but the inappropriate part was the fact that her little wannabe gangbanger boyfriend and like 25 of his friends were standing right next to him while he's doing it. So I guess that was the part that they had a problem with. But anyway, so my friend is just wild, banging into them, just talking shit, flirting with the guy's girlfriend right in front of him, whatever. There's like three or four of us there and 20, 25 of these guys. So what do they do? They sit there, they surround him, like 25 guys around my friend. There's just me, he's, he's fucking wasted, whatever. I'm like, fuck, I guess I'm just gonna go get my ass kicked with him, right? So I go running over there. The leader of their little group is like sitting there screaming, threatening him, saying this and that. He can't do this, whatever. He's, what he's gonna do to him, he's gonna beat his ass. So I go running over there. I get like, fuck it, I guess we're gonna have some fun. And so the guy comes up to me, this leader who's sitting there screaming, comes up to me and asks me for permission for his friend to fight my friend in a one-on-one -on -one fight. So in my head, I'm like, what, what the fuck is this guy talking about? So I evaluate the situation. You gotta know when to hold him and when to fold him. So I tell him, I can't let that happen because my friend is obviously wasted. And once my drunk friend starts beating the shit out of your friend over there, all your friends are gonna jump in and we're gonna, this, this is gonna just be forced to get out of control. I don't, know how, I don't know why it happened or what, what happened there, but he just shook his head and says, control your friend, and he walks away. This is just another example of how I realized the power of leadership and influence that's possible basically in the world, in, in, any, in any form of life. Basically being a hungry, skinny kid in the playground, elementary school, high school, the streets, jail, then the Marines. These are things that molded me into who I am today and encouraged me actually to create what we do and the way we do it at Peak Physique, and I wouldn't change any of it for the world. The camaraderie in the Marine Corps is like none other. So when it, when it was time to get out, I knew my calling. My purpose was to create a community and a culture in the fitness industry for people who needed something more, who needed support, who needed to fit in, no matter how different or crazy they thought they were, who couldn't get results anywhere else. This place in my vision was, would, would welcome their craziness. It would encourage them, encourage their craziness, and it would get them results guaranteed. This is why I started, why I started Peak Physique to create a fitness community for freaks like me. At Peak Physique, we're not a gym. Peak Physique is a highly capable and functioning, dysfunctional family. We've created a unique, unbreakable culture here. We have the most diverse group of people here that you will never see at any private gym, or even social gathering, for that matter. A type of group that would normally not be able to function in the same space with each other, and especially not be able to capable of getting uh, motivated and getting results and achieve the maximum results that, that they never dream of getting. Regardless of the fact, when they come here, there's an immediate bond with guaranteed results. Here it is possible. There are people who couldn't get results anywhere else, weren't made welcome anywhere else, couldn't get along with people anywhere else, maybe didn't even fit in anywhere else. Sounds like I'm probably talking about 95% of our clientele. I'm definitely talking about myself. But when all these people from every background imaginable show up to our gym and train, they realize this, is pla this place is far more than a gym. This place is their comfort zone, a place to be yourself. Let your beast out. Let your fucking super freak out. That's what we do here. And not have to worry about what anyone is thinking. A place where you can be you. Fuck a, fuck a judgment-free zone like Planet Weakness. This place you could scream, be silent, cry, growl, spit, shit, puke, breathe, curse. No one will give a fuck. It will be encouraged for you to be you and just let it out. Hold nothing back. That's, what get, that's what's going to get you going to where you need to be. That's what's going to make an impact and truly change your life. This is a place where if you fall down, both, both literally and figuratively, if you fall down, bust your ass, look like a fool. No one's gonna laugh at you, but they're not exactly just gonna grab your hand and pick you up either. Instead, you'll have a team encouraging you to figure out a way to get the fuck up on your own. And then if you truly need assistance and can't get up, you'll have dozens of warriors sitting there to help you. This is a place where you have a team of like-minded outcasts. Everyone here is in the same boat as you with common fears, doubts, past experiences, common problems, common demons, common previous fuck ups, everything you could think of, but also common goals. Sometimes we are even brutally forced to ignore each other here, but not for the reasons you might think. In other obnoxious gyms and environments, 
you might feel judged or scared or timid or that you're holding others back or you, or you feel like a fool, you look like a fool, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, besides the fact that here, this is the complete, we do things the complete opposite here, half the time your fellow warriors in here are too focused on surviving the freaking intensity of the workout themselves, so the last thing they're thinking about is how bad you think you suck or how bad you think you look while you think you suck. Everyone in here is fighting their own battle, their own demons, and preparing for their own personal invasion. This is the ultimate environment here where re real people get real results because we eliminate all the bullshit, all the drama, all the negativity. There's no fucking ne negativity allowed in here. You follow our lead, follow our guidance, follow your fellow warriors in this gym, and your results are 100% guaranteed. I promise you that, 100% guaranteed. No matter what your history, your situation, your setbacks, your injuries, your problems, or how fucked up in the head you are like me, or your goals, it doesn't matter. Just like you heard some of my stories just now, no matter what your, your story is, you will achieve maximum results here, as you will fit in here, as you will be welcomed here. You will see people walk into this gym like a lamb. Sad, lonely, depressed, low self-esteem, hopeless, on the verge of giving up. And you will see, see that same person walk out of here a fearless fucking lion. By the end of a single session, you'll see that same person in a huge group of people. Post-torture workout picture we'll do right here with smiling faces, crazy poses, immediately changed lives. In this place, is this place for everyone? Fuck no, it's not for everyone. But it is a place where everyone can fit in and feel welcome. But that, that, that's not what makes this place so unique, so special, and so effective. We are a highly motivated, dedicated, disciplined, relentless, cohesive unit. One big fucking dysfunctional family. I always tell all of our peak freaks that train here that we are training for the invasion. When the, in, in, when the inevitable invasion comes, peak physique will be a well-trained army ready for anything, ready to, ready to kill for each other, to die for each other. There's a, this is a fucking war out there. It's a war against temptation, a war against junk food, a war against everyone around you trying to drag you down. All those fucking crabs we were talking about, your haters. Sometimes they might even be family members, people that are just jealous of you, people that are miserable and they want you to be miserable with them. The invasion isn't just coming. The invasion is fucking here already. We are constantly in a battle, but we are a team, a group of warriors here, savages. We are a movement. We're a family. Peak Physique is a, is a culture, an unbreakable culture. I started Peak Physique after working at the big commercial gyms uh, for, for several years. I felt, I felt like something there was missing. Like people there seemed like they lacked a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, or any real objective or goals. they certainly lacked a feeling of community. It usually felt like a cesspool of disgusting egos flexing their imaginary or artificially induced muscles in the, in the mirror. Every machine that was around was known that this, this guy's machine is personally owned by some douchebag who just sits there for 30 minutes at a time, sitting there playing on his fucking flip phone, drinking his gallon bottle of water, and you dare not dare go within a 10-foot perimeter of his machine while he's fixing his hair and, and picking his teeth in the fucking mirror. We had an vision of building a unique fitness culture completely different of what you see in those commercial gyms, completely different if you'll see anywhere else in the world. A culture for people who felt they didn't fit in anywhere else, where they were, like I said, they were uncomfortable or couldn't get results anywhere else. For people who might have had great diversity, like the things that I'm telling you about already, and it just, they just need uh, some support, a team, or a family to help them to get to where they need to be. Basically, I didn't fit any, in anywhere, like I was telling you. As one of the poorest kids in class, I didn't fit in in the playgrounds, where they thought I was a little freak, a little weirdo. I didn't fit in elementary school because I didn't have any of the cool toys. I didn't choke, chew fucking tobacco in the woods. I didn't fit in high school because I didn't do any of the fucking drugs, and I didn't go to any parties, and I didn't like to do all the bullshit they were doing. I didn't fit in the streets causing trouble because I was just a psycho, and I would have ended up in prison for life. Nor did I fit in jail with the criminals. Once I joined the Marine Corps, I finally found somewhere where I could fit in. I understand, I finally understood what support and culture and camaraderie was. That is the exact type of environment that I've, I have created here at Peak Physique. A place where we support each other like a family, have each other's back no matter what, and everyone fits in. It's that same culture at Peak Physique that is an entity basically in itself. Now we didn't invent the fucking push-up. We didn't invent the fucking squat thrust. Sure, we perfected them. Sure, we motivate you better doing them than anyone else out there. Sure, we've created thousands of ways to do them better than anyone else and thousands of variations. And we've perfected the art of teaching them and coaching these exercises. But we didn't fucking invent these exercises. We have losers all over the place trying to copy our every move, our exercises, our workouts, even trying to copy our fucking personalities. Yeah, good luck with that one, right? 
They try to copy everything we do, but what they fail to realize is they will never emulate our community or our culture. It's impossible. I can create, build, apply, perfect, adapt, and fucking overcome at a pace and at a bandwidth far faster and greater than anyone can attempt to copy it. So it's just an impossible fight for anyone out there. For almost 15 years, we have been helping people who thought they had no hope, nowhere to turn, much like I thought when I joined the Marine Corps. Some might even say I was a lost cause, that there was nowhere for me to turn other than prison or even the morgue eventually. But I always knew there was something. I had a higher calling, a higher purpose to help some people who couldn't help themselves, to defend people who couldn't defend themselves against whatever their battle was, whatever their demons were, whatever their invasion was going to be. This is the community and the culture that we've created at Peak Physique. Like take one of our clients, for instance, recently, Maureen, that just lost, 50, uh, she's 50 years old, five foot four, I think, or something like that. Walked in here 305 pounds, walked in here hopeless at the end of the line, ready to give up. Her doctors told her she, was, she needed medication and surgery and all this other bullshit. She was going to die any day now, this and that. She kept living the way she did. In nine months, she lost over 100 fucking pounds and completely transformed her lifestyle, but most importantly, her mindset. Sure, expert, our, our, here at Peak Physique, our expert exercise and nutrition, our guidance and leadership that we provided helped her. But it was mainly to support the culture and the camaraderie that Peak Physique itself had created that made it possible for that to happen for her in such an, a short amount of time, such an amazing amount of weight in such a short amount of time. Since 2003, we've helped over 5,000 people lose weight and change their lives. We'll do whatever it takes to help you create your own personal similar story as what we're telling you now. Over the last 15 years, I've trained people when myself had broken hands, concussions, so-called flu or whatever they want to call it, colds which don't exist, food poisoning, broken ribs, broken bones, you name it, ripped torn knees, torn shoulders, and I still would show up and train and work and you wouldn't even know it. You would look at my face, you wouldn't know it. Something happens, I got hit by a car, this is what my face is going to look like. I have the flu, this is what my face is going to look like. I'm hungover, this is what my face is going to look like, this is what my energy is going to look like. It doesn't matter. I don't believe in bad days or days off or a fucking snow day. Half the time, it, all that shit is in your head. It's just holding you back. It's just limiting your mind. I'm ex I am obsessed with this peak physique culture that we created, helping people transform as many lives as possible and, and lose weight. My goal is 20 in 20. That is to help 20,000 people by the year 2020 to completely transform their mind, their body, and their lifestyle and give them a place to fit in where they feel when they feel like there's nowhere else to turn. I uh, guess you could say the Marine Corps saved my life, so now Peak Physique has the ability, I'm, I'm trying to help save as many other people's lives as possible. Only a Marine will be in the middle of a losing battlefield, getting their asses whooped, have a chance to retreat, have a chance to get away, but chooses to run right back into hell to rescue the remains of a, of a dead body of a fallen brother. We'd rather lose a hundred more of us than to leave a man behind, even just the body of a man behind. At Peak Physique, we will leave no man, woman, or even fucking goat behind, no matter what, or we will die trying. The Marine Corps literally saved my life. Now it's my duty, my mission, my obligation, and the entire purpose for powering my existence. So I created Peak Physique to pay it forward and save as many civilian lives as possible. When I joined the Marine Corps, I swore an oath to defend the Constitution and the people of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same. I promise you here at Peak Physique, I will go to any lengths necessary to defend you, to help you, to get your results you need, to do whatever it takes to help you change and create the life you deserve and the results you need. I have visited hell so you don't have to. I will kill for you, I will die for you, and that is a promise. Here you are family, and you will fit in and get results, and you will have a lot of fun doing it and probably meet a lot of fucking awesome people along your journey. And I promise, I personally guarantee it. So that's a little bit of answering that question, a little probably longer answer and a little more information that you wanted. But now we have some questions that some people had emailed in. There might be some down in the comments. There's a, a lot of comments down there, so I'll have to check them once we go off of live, maybe, because we also have a lot of questions here from email I have to check. The first question is, someone says, have you ever killed anyone? <laughs> well, if you just listen to what I told you, you probably can answer that question yourself. But how stupid do you think I am if I killed someone? Would I go and say and tell you about the seven or eight people that I killed? Allegedly? No, I'm not that dumb, right? So anyway, next question is, someone said, can, I, can a person bulk with exercise that doesn't include weights or is weightlifting the only way to add bulk? I'm assuming you're not saying bulk. Bulk is those power lifters that have a, a big belly and big barrel arms. I'm assuming you're saying get fit, add muscle, and lean. And absolutely, you can add 
muscle and get lean without any weights. There are times where I'll go through phases of training where I'll go a month, six weeks, eight weeks without touching a single weight and I'll just do body weight. The king of upper body exercises is a pull-up. Think of the amount of, of strength building movements you could do without any weight. The amount of cardio exercises you could do that use your body weight that are going to build and tone lean muscle. I'm not sure if you meant bulk because I don't think you wanted to bulk up, but I'm thinking you mean build muscle. Think about pull-ups push-ups, dips, inverted rows, squats, lunges, step-ups. This is stuff that are going to get you in the best shape of your life. Like you don't even need much equipment. Just some basic stuff you could do anywhere. You could have stuff in a, a small, empty room. What's the next question? What's one thing I can do immediately with my already decent nutrition to immediately impact my weight loss goals? Well, one thing you could do, if, that's, if you already think you're eating pretty decent... Probably that means you're eating some fruits and vegetables and this and that. So one thing you could do immediately is cut. Probably if you're looking to take it to the next level and you need to trim a little extra, lose a little extra weight, is probably cut your fruits down or completely eliminate your fruits. Think about like a protein shake. People get a protein shake, it has 100 calories, 120 calories. Then they add in a cup of strawberries, a half a banana, two tablespoons of peanut butter, and some skim milk or whatever. You just took that protein shake, 100 and something calories, and you just made it a massive bulking meal. You just put 100 calories of strawberries in there, 100 calories of bananas in there, 180 calories of peanut butter in there, 50 calories of milk in there. You just made that not a weight loss thing. You're not gonna be, you will be in a bulking phase. So if bulking was your goal, that's what's gonna happen. So probably cutting fruits out. You basically took your protein shake. Any one of those protein shakes in the label that tells you how to make it, those protein shakes are intended to be consumed exactly like that, just the way they show on that label. Not to mix, and they're not made to mix anything in there. No fruits, maybe, if anything, unsweetened uh, almond milk, 30 calories. That's the only thing you should be adding in your protein shake. They're meant to be by themselves. You're basically flavoring and adding flavor into your protein shake with triple the calories of the protein shake itself, making it now a carb source or even a fat source rather than a protein source. So one thing you could do immediately to impact your goals is Probably cut that out right there. Uh, next question is, what, is it okay to add a couple of yolks in my egg whites? When I have my egg whites. It's okay, it's not horrible, but if your goal is to get in the best shape of your life, get lean, if you wanna see some abs, you wanna lose weight and get in the best shape of your life, then you wanna go zero yolks. Reason for that, one egg will have 70 calories, right? But if you look at calories from fat, calories from fat is going to be 45. All that fat for the most part is in that yolk. You could find your fat sources other places. That means 45, that's like 65 to 70% of that egg is going to be fat. So you take that 45 calories out, that's going to leave you 25 calories left in the egg white. So now you can eat as many egg whites as you want. So think about it. You could double, you can go from two eggs, go up to four eggs. You're going to lower your fat, lower your calories, and you're going to double your protein. Each egg white is like four, five, six grams of protein. So just completely take those yolks out. If you're getting in the best shape, maybe abs or losing weight, is what you're looking for. We got to get set up for some training, so we got a couple time for a couple more questions in here. And one more. That's a good one. <laughs> How did you meet the Russian, and did she live with you in your cave? Well, I was in a real high and classy strip club in Czechoslovakia, and she was just lighting up and down the poles so great doing a great job, and I didn't even tip her, and she still came home with me, so I figure, you know what, she's the keeper. And no, I live in the cave alone, by myself, out in the woods, by myself, alone. Let's see if there's any other questions down here, because we gotta get set up for a training session here. Is it okay to have three protein shakes a day? It's hard for me to eat most days. If you're doing protein shakes, you need to try to get a little more food. Three is probably too much. A maximum of protein shakes, if you need to replace them with meals, is probably two. So get rid of the three protein shakes. You probably want to cut that down. One to two maximum. Obviously, you need to get more food. You can't just live off supplements. Supplements are intended to supplement your diet. Someone said something about uh, almonds I saw. Someone asked about almonds if that's a good snack. A decent snack, sure, but again, almonds, is it a healthy type of fat? It sure is, but it is a fat source. So anything you look into lean or build some lean muscle, lose some weight, and almond is a fat source, so that is gonna be basically make you fatter. Also, 100 calories is something like nine almonds. You convert that into egg whites, that's four egg whites, is equivalent to like nine or 10 almonds or something. Obviously, a better option for a small meal is gonna be four egg whites rather than nine almonds, which egg whites is gonna have zero, 100 calories, 
zero grams of fat and 24 grams of protein as opposed to 100 calories of almonds which is going to have like 16 grams of fat and maybe eight grams of protein so look at that is it a healthy snack sure but there's much healthier snacks you can have obviously depending on what your goals are let's see what other questions are on there How do you make sure when you travel, you, they are not something with butter or anything in your food? You tell them, you sit there and you give them as many instructions as you need to when you're going out to eat, exactly how you need it to be made, what you need it to be made in, and when it gets to you, if you're not convinced it was made, you want it, you send that shit back to them and you complain about it and you keep making them bring it back to you until they make it the way you want. Most places are usually gonna listen to you because they wanna get their tip, and then once you complain and you send the food back, their manager's gonna come over and probably give you that shit for free anyway, so, Send that shit back. Make it, make it, make it the right way at the restaurant. Because I travel all the time and I eat exactly the way I want to eat. Another way to do it is prepare whatever, your own stuff, eat ahead of time. Just get the minimum amount of stuff when you're out there. What's another question? How important is fat? Of course you need fat. We, we, don't, we just believe in healthy, whole eating here. We don't go on low carb, really, you know, zero carb or zero fats. You need fats, obviously, just to function. You need your carbs, especially if we train intense here, so you need some carbs, but you need to limit it. Someone said quinoa, something about quinoa. No, quinoa is, is it better than white rice? Sure. Is it better than brown rice? Not really, not much, maybe a little bit. But all of them, both of them, look at a cup of brown rice. One cup of brown rice, which is like this much, is like 100 or 200 something calories in one cup with like 45 grams of carbs. That's in one cup. No one is having only one cup of brown rice at a time. You're loading like two, three cups at a time. So you're going to be having a mountain of that. That's why just rice, just if you're looking to get in shape, get some abs, get, lose weight, cut rice completely. Kanoa is just a cool word that people do use on the internet. Kanoa, and they have their kale and all their cool internet words or whatever, like the fucking burpee. But Kanoa, cut it. Rice, cut it. Huh? What'd you say? I didn't hear you. Were you a drill instructor in the Marine Corps? No, they kicked me out because they said I was too mean. <laughs> what other questions we got? How often per week should we work out? Can boot camp and boxing be taken the same day? He, the sweet spot for days of training, I would say for most people is gonna be four to five, depending on where you are in your level of fitness, obviously. The minimum, bare minimum, three times a week of intense training. And then still you want, to, you want to plan for activity seven days a week. Activity means going for a walk, a hike, something like that, some basic stuff at home maybe. You want to plan for that seven days a week. But to come here to our training, the sweet spot I'd say is four to five days. If you're on a roll, you can do six days a week. Make sure you do need a rest day. The rest day could still be an active recovery, going for a, a long walk or something, uh, something like that. Can you do a boot camp boxing in the same day? It's, you can here and there. Don't do it every day. You definitely don't want to do it every day. Maybe once in a while, if you are recovered good, you, maybe they're spaced out or your nutrition is right for that day. Sometimes more training that, that much in one day regularly is just going to wear your muscles down, wear your joints down, make you too sore, also even make you hungrier. So you're going to end up eating more. So you think that two hours of training a day is going to help you. Sometimes it's going to hurt you because it might s slow down your training the next day. You can't go as hard the next day. So you're not going to work as hard the next day and burn as many calories. You also are going to get maybe hungry if you're going to eat more than you should have. So sometimes it, it could go against you. Everyone's different though. Some of you, depending on where you are, can get away with it and handle it. What other questions we got? We got to go. What are some good routines for working out on the road? You should have joined our Game Changer program because that's what it's all about. We give them workouts and routines and we actually just went over it this Saturday in our meeting about what they could do on the road with zero equipment. Obviously, that's a whole 20-minute segment itself. We can't do that right now. Maybe we'll set up a whole other uh, Facebook Live or something like that. What else we got? Any more questions? All right, that's it. Whatever. I think we're good. Any other questions that I missed on there? I can't. Uh, don't see them on there. I'll answer in the comments, or you can email me the questions. Um, don't forget, you can come on in and try a class out if you want. I don't think I cursed that many times. I said I was only going to curse that one time, right? I think I only cursed once. Did I keep, did I, did I, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't remember. I kind of blacked out. So I think I only cursed once, right? All right. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, you can just put them in the comments or you can call, text, email, come by. See you later.